first thing is, I'd, like I said, thank you for the proposal, and I'd like to get the, the twenty thousand across to you. Um, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna the second call I'm gonna make here is to my money guy, and he's gonna get in touch with you on how to wire the funds to you. Okay, we are running out of time, and you know, so we need to do it quick. He told us to send the check to Americans United for Change. It was earlier this year that we purchased a shell company called Repulse Bay Limited. It was incorporated in Belize, Central America in 2005. Next, we opened a bank account in Belize so we could move money around the world anonymously. You threw in a timely way. Your guy, your guy took care of business right away. Yes, I, I, I just knew it took tricky um, route through Belize, and, I'm, and I just wanted to make sure that, that that got to you. So good. I'm glad. I'm glad. The money definitely helped. Shortly after the funds were released, Charles Roth's niece, our journalist, got offered an internship at Creamer's firm, Democracy Partners. Roth's money man, Michael Carlson, requested a meeting with Creamer. Carlson said he was looking for an immigration lawyer with powerful connections for a wealthy client in Syria who wanted to live in the U.S. Making the phone call, I'm going to record. I just need to, f I will try and find a couple of good referrals to you and get back to you pretty quick then. Okay. Fabulous. Brad Woodhouse, the president of AUFC, the folks we had sent the money to, heard that we were releasing undercover videos exposing their activities. Woodhouse told a journalist that AUFC was going to return the $20,000. He was concerned it might have been an illegal foreign donation. Critics of our earlier stories have suggested that Creamer isn't as well connected as we reported, that he is just the husband of Chicago Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky. We beg to differ. According to White House visitor logs, Creamer visited the White House 342 times since 2009, 47 of those times with Obama. But it's Creamer's own words that confirm our reporting. Barack Obama was the best campaign in the history of American politics. I mean, the second one. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first one was good, too. I've been, I was a consultant to both. The second one was what did you the, the, everything hit on every level. Every aspect. How, how does he do it? Still, I mean, he never makes a mistake when he's giving a presentation. He's consistent as possible. Uh, I mean, more consistent than a scientific experiment. He's a pro. Um, sure I've known the president since he was a community organizer in Chicago. I need to meet him. Okay. <laughs> you may have a lot more opportunity once he's done. 99, 98 days, something like that, 97. Yeah, cool. So when do you got to go back? I was just at an event with him in Chicago, actually, on Friday last. <clears throat> um, okay. He's just as good as ever. He's, he's um, I, I do a lot of work with the White House on their issue, mm -hmm. helping to run issue campaigns that they've been involved in, I mean, uh, for immigration mm -hmm. reform, for... Yeah. For the, for the health care bill, for the health care bill, for the, bill. For the, bill. For the uh, you like some pepper, Henry? Yes, please. For the uh, enjoy. Thank you. Take the for thank you. Mm -hmm. Try and make America more like Britain when it comes to gun violence issues. I've been asked about um, videos that have come from this outlet uh, in the past, and in each time I've tried to um, urge people to take those reports not at face value. Uh, and not just with a grain of salt, but maybe even a whole package of salt. Uh, because despite what the name might suggest, these videos have not often revealed the truth. And I think at this point, I would urge extreme caution uh, and draw conclusions about anybody's character based on uh, a few hours of uh, having looked at this video. Because time and time and time again, information that is released by this, information, by this uh, organization uh, is uh, a lot different than initial reports would indicate. All right, this is now the fourth installment by Project Veritas in terms of what they have been revealing, which, by the way, is fairly extensive and corrupt. It's the fourth and now a series, a multi-part series, that is sending shockwaves through the DNC, the Clinton campaign. That on top of the WikiLeaks that I went over in the first hour today. Welcome back. Glad you're with us. 24 now till the uh, top of the hour. And joining us right now, we have the one and only James O'Keefe. He's the founder of Project Veritas. He spent well over a year investigating this corruption, this nexus between the DNC, Hillary Clinton's campaign, and the fomenting of violence, the plans to orchestrate widespread voter fraud, and now this fourth installment today. Uh, how are you, sir? Hey, th hey, thanks, Sean. And as you just heard that sound coming into the segment, that was Creamer, who has been let go now from the DNC, describing his close relationship 
with both Obama and Clinton taking $20,000 from a Belize bank account. That's what's happening in this latest installment. I thought that was uh, Belize. That's where all the rich people put their money to, so they don't pay taxes, I've heard. I've read about that. Drug dealers and, and people who avoid the IRS typically use the British Virgin Islands and Belize offshore accounts. So we actually created an offshore account, a real company, that we wired money to them. And then and then as soon as Veritas came out with the first video, they quickly sent the money back. Well, actually, right before we released the first video, we reached out to, for them to comment, and then they, they sent the money back. So they thought it was something wrong with taking the foreign money. But Kramer brags about how he can give us access to Hillary, give us a quid pro quo, says he's on daily calls with the Hillary campaign. And, and By the way, isn't that great? I mean, you made a pretty difficult call here to keep the investigation going. You had to decide to pony up 20 grand for this yeah. effort. And I'm sure there was probably some consternation in the room as you're saying, really, to finish this, we got to give these people money. Uh, but well, I thought it was the right call. And then you ended up getting it back, which I was glad for you. Well, whatever marginal advantage they get with that $20,000 is heavily outweighed by the massive public relations hit and ethical hit and potentially legal hit. I mean, two people have presumed but what's remarkable about this, they, they returned the 20000 to us, by the way, but what's remarkable about this whole thing is that you just heard Josh Ernest at the White House say, exercise extreme caution. I mean, Kramer, he, Kramer this is significant. People just need to put pressure on both Obama and Hillary because this guy was close to both of them. And he says so multiple times in the video. And we have some material that, um, you know, showing White House conference calls and, and, and calls with the White House with Kramer. He invited, again, invited our undercover reporter to... To the White House, I could not go because I wouldn't dare go into the White House with a hidden camera. That's against the law. But he invited us to go there, and, and Ernest at the White House, the press secretary, is saying just exercise extreme caution. Yeah, no, and I read this today. They're, they're urging extreme caution, but this is what we know. This guy's been to the White House 342 times. This guy is on tape saying every morning I'm on a call at 1030 that goes over the message being driven by the campaign headquarters. You have on tape the flow of money from Hillary's campaign to the DNC, to this particular group, to those people fomenting violence or orchestrating voter fraud. Now you got in a little bit deeper and you gave $20,000 and 20000 was part of a, basically a down payment. They thought they were going to get a lot more money. And as a result, what were they promising you? They were promising us some type of quid pro quo, which really is as American as apple pie at this point. But what it does prove, he says he can arrange a meeting with Hillary Clinton. He says he's on conference calls every day with the Hillary Clinton campaign. So in return for the $20,000 from this overseas donor, he can give us access. And what this proves is more of what we've shown in the first few videos, that it's straight from the top. Video number three, which I was on your program talking about on Monday, shows that Hillary was personally involved in making people dress up like like these ridiculous ducks, Donald Ducks, and would foment reactions, get punched in the face. That was her decision, according to Brad Woodhouse, Bob Kramer, and Scott Fovel featured in the videos. Even Donna Brazil's DNC, the person in the video, her name is Price, says that it was Hillary's idea. And Bob Kramer is now doubling down on these new tapes, saying how close he is with, with Hillary. So if we had a press... So this is really the big headline out of this is that Hillary Clinton, between the third and fourth video, is making decisions to directly to these dark arts political operatives that are fomenting violence, engaging in a plot and scheme for massive voter fraud. And it sounds like money funneling, laundering, foreign donations. Right. Is, is, right. That, is that a fair characterization? Yes. This is money coming from a, a bank account in Belize. And the evidence that they thought it was wrong is that they returned it. I mean, why did they take the money? for? for and then when they get caught, they say, oh, let me return you the money. And, and Brad Woodhouse was on, I think it was Fox and Friends yesterday morning. Brad Woodhouse, by the way, is the guy who runs this nonprofit organization that was working illegally with the DNC. And, and Ducey asked him, Brad, were you coordinating? He's, you bet I was. These guys are just so arrogant. Yeah. I mean, we, it's against well, the we, law. I have that tape. Let me play this for you because this was on uh, Fox and Friends with Brad Woodhouse. And right after that, I came out of that and I asked Rudy Giuliani, is that legal? Because he said Rudy Giuliani's wrong. Hang on, let's play this. It appears well, you're coordinating. Are you? Of course we're coordinating. I'm absolutely coordinating. It's completely 100% legal. Here's the problem, okay. Steve, with these, uh, here's the problem with, uh, with James O'Keefe. He's a liar, he's a convict, and he's been successfully sued for lying about people and putting them in a, in a so false So are you saying light. the video I, is not on. accurate? 
Well, it, it, it's accurate that we're coordinating with the campaign. We're legally allowed to. I have, a, I have an organization that ex exists on the coordinated side of the wall. We just had Rudy exactly. Giuliani on the show, and he said it, it's not legal for outside well, groups to coordinate. Well, he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. And then I interviewed Rudy after he saw that, and he said, that guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Do you know the answer to that? Yeah, I do. Let me address that real quickly. So after Watergate, Congress passed the campaign coordination law. It's very simple. To, to prove a violation, you just have to be a payment from someone other than Hillary. That, in this case, would be this nonprofit, which took our $20,000 from the Belize bank account. And the campaign has to be materially involved in shaping the communications. You have Kramer on tape saying it was Hillary's idea to put the ducks on the ground to, to get punched in the face. So you have the payment, you have the conduct, and you have the coordination. Done. FEC complaint has already been filed. Uh, we have 100,000 people on our email list putting pressure on the FEC. Well, because we live in a so, uh, you know, sort of, in my opinion, banana republic where the government doesn't enforce the laws, Brad Woodhouse can go on TV and be as arrogant as you just heard him be. This whole notion I'm a liar, I mean, it's, it, this is, of course they're going to say that. Not one single thing in the video, Sean, has anyone disputed. Brad Woodhouse just said it's accurate. It, every, in the video, I'm a liar, but it's accurate. I selectively edit video. Put another way, like every reporter on the planet, my colleagues gather a massive material for reporting and then winnow it down to tell a story. That's called journalism, especially when it strikes a chord. Do you want to address the personal attacks you always get whenever you expose them? I, I do. I, it would take me probably longer than the segment allows, but the, the editing thing is total rubbish. I mean, Acorn, the, I wasn't sued over editing. I was sued for invading the Acorn people's privacy. It had nothing to do with editing. It had to do with California filming in California, which is a two-party consent state to film. So when you hear people say, O'Keefe's a liar, he edits film, he was sued for editing. I was never sued for editing. I was sued for filming these government workers without their knowledge. And by the way, I, that's a fight I, I'm willing to take to the Supreme Court. I think we need to film more government workers without their knowledge in, in their offices during the course of business. And the second thing is that I'm a criminal, a convict. But that, with that again, Sean, that was going into a federal building with a camera using pretenses. I showed my real driver's license, and I was eventually cleared of any felony. It was just the mere fact that I was inside of a federal building filming. I learned my lesson, but it really wasn't that big of a deal. Bob Creamer is an actual convicted felon who's actually been convicted for bank fraud and has actually met with Obama 47 times and talked to Hillary every day. So I'm a convict for a misdemeanor using a camera in a federal building. He's a convict for bank a, a, fraud. A misdemeanor is not, does not make you a convict, by the way. You know, it's not a felony, is it? It's no, a misdemeanor. No, no. Yeah. It's, a, it's a class B misdemeanor, yeah. petty crime for filming in a federal on a federal property gee, from gee, a journalist. You, and by the way, I'm more with you. I tend to believe that we need more filming of government workers to find out more corruption, more lies, more uh, planning and scheming and plotting to manipulate and foment violence and voter fraud. I think it's more important the American people know that truth. Look, I, the reason I do want to give you that opportunity is because every time you're talked about on any other show but mine, it seems that's the attack you get. And I want to make sure that people understand. All right. Uh, what? You, tell me what else is coming. Well, we have some materials. We're still, we're literally producing them. We're releasing a little something tomorrow. We're releasing tapes all next week. I just wish that people would put pressure on the White House about the relationship with Creamer more because I can't do that. That, that. that The press pool has to do that. And I think people have got to ask Hillary Clinton about what we've exposed so far. But we have more. We have more materials that show White House conference calls between Bob Creamer and some of the conversations. Bob Creamer was the, as the highest as the high gets. Literally working right with Clinton, right with Obama, and we, we can show more of that. All right. Well, and when is the Media Matters stuff coming out? That's tomorrow. So one of the things that happened was we did Media Matters, David Brock. They don't, they don't like me for some reason over there. I don't know why. They're a huge, they're, they don't like you and they don't like me, Sean, but they, they did invite us to their headquarters to have some conversations. They talked specifically about these women, these women who've been by, groped by Trump, allegedly. They were, they were doing a program on that. So we have a little something coming out tomorrow on that. Do you have David uh, Brock on tape? Unfortunately not, but we do have the president of Media Matters on tape. His name is Bradley. Uh, I can't remember his last name at the moment, but David Brock was out of town. But but uh, David Brock has gotten in trouble for money laundering himself between him and various uh, groups that he's not supposed to be coordinating with. Was that proven or is that in court? That's that's currently there have been some stories written about that. Um, these these groups tend to get away with it, Sean, because they, there's just no law enforcement yeah. at the FEC. I think somebody filed a complaint against me again this year. Here we go, another $100,000 in legal fees. Uh, all right, uh, thank you, James O'Keefe, Project Veritas. We appreciate it as always. Thanks for your good work. And, uh, thanks, thanks, Sean.